adult Sunday school leader. It is Easter week, Passion week, Holy week. Call it different things in different churches and different traditions. And I know in even in Southern Baptist churches, there are a variety of different services that go on. You may have started off last week with Palm Sunday. Uh, some churches will celebrate or observe Monday, Thursday. Uh, other churches will have Good Friday services, and of course we culminate that on Easter Sunday. Hope this is a great week for you. Let's look ahead and see what's going to uh, be in our Sunday School lesson on Easter Sunday this coming week. We have a special focus lesson. It's entitled, He is Risen. It's out of Luke 24, verses 1-8 through 8 and 36-40. through 40. And the point of the lesson is that the resurrection of Jesus is a fact you can build your life on. I just have a few comments about this week's text and then maybe some supporting statements to help in your Sunday school lesson preparation. First of all, as we look, uh, it, as we just think about Jesus' ministry on earth from conception, birth, through the ascension, the resurrection, women played a great part in his ministry. We look at whom did the angel visit initially? Uh, when we were talking about Jesus' birth, well, we visited uh, Mary, the mother, the, and announced that he that she would conceive and give birth to the Messiah. We look toward the end of his earthly ministry at, at the at the resurrection. Whom did Jesus? I mean, I'm sorry. Whom did the angels talk to? Talk to women that was there that were there at the tomb. So, to me, it's interesting uh, that at the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. He was in a virgin womb and emerged as the promised Messiah. And then at the end of his ministry was in an uh, unused tomb and emerged as victorious Lord. So he went from the virgin womb to the empty tomb. That'll preach, I think. Um, well, just as we can look back on you know, 2,000 years this side of, of Jesus, and we can look back and say, how in the world did those those Jewish people, especially those rabbis, those scholars who knew the Bible, knew the Old Testament, how could they have missed the birth of Jesus? All the prophecies that pointed toward him. And I think as Jesus' disciples, they probably did the same thing after the resurrection and after Jesus opened their mind or after they remembered his words, they were probably thinking, how in the world could we have missed what he promised and he said he was going to do and, and the scripture said was going to happen? So we see that in last week's lesson in Luke uh, 24, 45, how Jesus opened the minds of the disciples for them to understand the scripture. We see something similar this week in verse 8, when the women then remembered his words. If you want to go back and look at last week's prep talk video, you might look starting in uh, minute 5.39 to minute 9, uh, 23 seconds, about four minutes or so, and, and look at that because I, I told in that last week about several Old Testament prophecies about the resurrection as well as some of Jesus' words that they remembered. Now, just like last week's lesson, uh, as we look in verse 39, he says, look at my hands and my feet. It's important to note that this uh, appearance of Jesus, it's not a ghost, it's not an apparition. This is the same physical Jesus that was walking with them for three plus years uh, on the earth. Uh, now we look down, following our text this week in verses 41 through 43, if you want to look at this as well, it mentions that Jesus uh, asked for some broiled fish and ate fish with the disciples. We know a ghost doesn't eat fish. So you, know, you might want to bring that out, that this was definitely the physical Jesus. Look at my hands, look at my feet. I'm eating fish. I am a person. I'm real. Now, the point of this lesson, if you remember, is that the resurrection of Jesus is a fact that you can build your life on. Now, we think about the birth of the Messiah. Great. That's wonderful. Uh, virgin birth, uh, virgin conception, uh, what we celebrate at Christmas time, right? It's pretty great. Think about his death, of course, Good Friday, the death, the betrayal, uh, the burial. Uh, he willingly suffered and died for us. He paid that penalty for our sins. But it's the resurrection that really makes Christianity. 
you know, leaders come and they're born and some uh, die horrible deaths, maybe even martyrdom type deaths, uh, maybe even for their followers. But it's the resurrection that sets us apart from other religions. Now, both Josh McDowell and Lee Strobel, very intelligent guys, uh, they were atheists, and they set out to disprove the Bible. This is on their own, to two separate occasions they did this. And uh, they became believers after studying not only the Bible and what the Bible has to say about itself, but also studying those extra-biblical, the historical record, and seeing what, how did it all mesh. And sure enough, they came to the conclusion that the Bible was right and that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. <clears throat> now, Lee Strobel mentions four E's that helped him in uh, believing about the resurrection, that the resurrection was a historical fact. And the first one was the execution. There was, there's no recorded survivor of a Roman crucifixion. Pretty brutal. Um, you've probably heard various descriptions about that, how brutal that a, a crucifixion was. And then if you think about what Jesus endured leading up to that crucifixion, too, the, the mocking, the beating, the crown of thorns, all of those things, <clears throat> that there is no way that what's been known as the swoon theory could have actually happened. And that was that Jesus more or less just fainted on the cross. Uh, he was still barely alive. They, they put him in the tomb, and his disciples came and stole the body. That's just not going to fly because Romans were... They were aces when it came to execution. They knew what they were doing. They inflicted as much pain, took you to the edge of death, and brought you back, and, and finally, you know, made sure that those people were dead. Now, T.W. Hunt, in his study, The Mind of Christ, he does an excellent job. It's pretty gruesome, but he talks about the physical things, for lack of a better word, the, 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 the physical things that Jesus went through at crucifixion. So if you have time, you might, might want to look that up. So that's one E is the execution. Uh, the other one, uh, another E is uh, E for early accounts. This is the early accounts that that stated that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, usually <clears throat> in those times, it took a, at least a couple of generations before um, something, a, a story that was circulating uh, as a myth, as a legend, before it uh, became uh, in before people actually started believing that and repeating it. It took a couple of generations, so you're looking at uh, 40, 50, 60 years before it actually became part of the culture. Well, the early accounts of the resurrection uh, went around a lot earlier than that, and people were believing it left and right. In fact, the creed that we find in First uh, First Corinthians 15, 53 uh, that Jesus was buried for our sins according to the scriptures and died and was raised according to the scriptures. That creed came much, much earlier than two generations. And so the, the amount of people that believe that and follow that was, it, it is a lot less time than, uh, than just a legend would, would take to circulate. The other E is the empty tomb. We can see in Matthew 28, verses 11 through 15, of course, we see the guards that were stationed there, and uh, they were stationed there to guard, and uh, of course, <laughs> the empty tomb. And when the earthquake came, the stone was rolled away, all this, they ran back and they reported to the chief priests and the elders what had happened. And the chief priests, they knew what Jesus' claim was. He said They knew that he said he was going to raise again on the third day. And so they basically paid off these guards to say that the disciples came and stole his body. They knew Jesus' claim. When it happened, they tried to cover it up with some alternative facts, we'll say. The other E is uh, eyewitnesses. There are at least nine sources, both inside the New Testament and outside the Old Testament, that confirm his post-crucifixion appearances. So those are the four E's that, that led Lee Strobel to... Um, B go from atheist to believing this resurrection was an actual historic fact. It wasn't just a legend that people have been propagating for 2,000 years. So that, that's the point you need to get across this week, is that the resurrection is a fact you can build your life on. It's just not a nice little pretty story that we tell in March or April every year when it's Easter time. And, you know, we put that alongside the Easter bunny and the chicks and all that. No, this is a fact. This is a historical fact. 
You can bank on it. You can build your life on it. The next week, we start a new unit. It's called uh, Identity, My Life of Faith. And so we'll be looking at, in the upcoming weeks, my uh, life in Christ, life in the church, life at home, life at work, life in the community, and my life on mission. So, parting words. And, of course, this is especially for our folks at First Baptist Whitehall, but also wherever you are watching this, you might try to get this across to your people as well. Hopefully it's not too late. Uh, at our church, we have two services. We have an 8.30 morning service and a 10, uh, 10.30 morning service. No, we don't. <laughs> we have an 8.30 morning service and an 11 o'clock morning service. We had a 10.30 service this week. Anyway, so we got two services. And on Easter, our second service is very, very packed. And the first service is pretty full, but there's a few more chairs available. So what I encourage our folks is to remember this slogan, early up, in, and far. Early up, in, and far. I've been saying that, I think, every year since I've been here. Come to the early service if you can. That just frees up that many more chairs for our guests who will be coming at Easter. That's early. Up. Sit up as close to the front of the service or front of the sanctuary as you can. This helps uh, when people come in the back of the sanctuary looking for a seat. It helps them find that seat quicker. Early up in. Sit in. Sit on the inside of the row when you start off a row. You know, we love those outside seats. We love to come and sit down around the outside row and everybody has to walk over us. It'd just be a lot easier if you started from the inside and, and then worked, worked your way out. And then far, early up in and far. Park as far away from the building as you can. And I know we have senior adults. We have some folks with maybe some physical disabilities who need to park in those closer spaces. And we have those spaces reserved for them. But... Um, you know, our, our, a lot of our folks, and I'm sure a lot of folks in most churches, they love to get those close spots for whatever reason. Um, I know when I go to a, like a Walmart, the closest I can park is probably about one of the furthest spaces in distance that our church has. So if I can go to Walmart and walk X number of feet, I can surely do that uh, a time or two on Sunday morning. So anyway, just some... Um, Words of advice to help make this Easter Sunday better for you. Well, I hope you have a great week, a great Sunday school lesson, and we'll get uh, looking at this unit next week, My Life of Faith. Hope you have a great week. See you next week.